Good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in to Dear Cypher Sue. I'm Susan McCord. Today's topic is, can long distance love relationships stand the test of time? Today, so many things have changed since 25, 30 years ago with dating and relationships. And also, the options we have now on how to meet somebody have also altered a lot. So what's happening is there's so much more chance of meeting somebody that's outside your province, your state, your country, even your continent. And so people are starting to do things a little bit differently. They're actually broadening their horizons, so to speak. And what's happening is people are falling in love with somebody that's not in their area zone. And so what happens in situations like this Love is complicated already, but it can become even more complicated when you add distance and mileage within the relationship. There are so many things that you have to talk about if you're willing to take a chance on love in this type of environment. It's extremely important that you get some of the tough conversations out of the way right away. And what you want to talk about is, is this a committed relationship? Are you both on the same page as far as whether you want to be exclusive with each other? Do you have discussions about your future, where you may live eventually? Are you meeting some of their friends and their family? Are you actually treating this like a relationship as if you're in the same city? Because if you can manage to put all those things as a priority, you can actually make this work. So now with having this amazing opportunity, I think it's amazing, some people don't like it at all. They'd rather meet the old fashioned way, but it's harder as you get older because you're not maybe going out as much. There's not as many venues that cater to an older crowd other than maybe restaurants and a couple of lounges and sporting events. So it is a little more difficult for people to meet. So again, they're opening up their box, so to speak, of letting people come in that maybe don't live in the same city. There's a lot of people right now that are having what I call cyber relationships, where they're only dating each other via FaceTime or their phones or whatever the, the technology is that they're using. And they're not sometimes even meeting each other. And they're okay with this type of uh, arrangement. Now that's not for everybody, that's for sure, because you're not having body, you know, connections. You're doing face to face on, on the computer and things like that. But how is that going to work for you long term? Just make sure you're going into it under the right reasons. You're not doing it hoping that things are going to evolve. Because if you have that type of intimate, amazing connection, you're going to want to see each other. That's just the way it works. That's the way we are as human beings. So let's talk about the fact that you've established, you want to see where this can go. You are starting to pay close attention to each other and you're giving each other a priority in your lives. So the things to look out for obviously are what I just mentioned. You want to make sure that you're both on the same page that you want to be exclusive and you want to see where this can go. Another thing, it's really important to make the travel time reciprocated so that it's not just one person constantly doing all the work to come and see you. You have to put an effort in as well. Also, you want to meet their friends, their family, see where they live, what they're all about and vice versa. You need to be able to share everything with them as you would in a, a relationship within your own city. This is extremely important because if you don't have these two things that I just mentioned, you don't have the foundation to even start a long distance relationship. Then you want to make sure that, you know, if you've got children or things like that, that you discuss that as well. Like where do they fit in to your life? How are you going to include them? Are they going to be at a, keep them at a distance until you really know where you connect? Those kind of things are really important to talk about as well. And are they into a commitment in the sense of marriage or living together because that's another very important topic that you need to discuss because if you fall madly in love with them and a couple of years goes by and you haven't talked about this and then all of a sudden they go oh no I'm not moving from my city and you're not want to move from your city well you got a big problem 
So these things need to be discussed within the first couple of months if you are going to be in a committed partnership with them. You need to come to terms with how often you're going to see each other. That needs to be talked about so that there's no insecurities that pop in because when you have a long distance relationship, insecurities can be a really, really big thing that happen. Because if you're FaceTiming or you're, or you're not getting you know, their undivided attention in a text or things like that, it can really set you back because first of all, you're not with them to understand what's going on. So you need to be able to always be, you know, confirming things are great between the two of you, make sure they are a priority and you need to FaceTime them regularly. Don't play games with, oh, I won't do it this week, I'll do it next week, all those kind of things. You want to be fairly consistent like you would if you're in a relationship at home because there's nothing more disheartening when you think you're in the going in the right direction with somebody and then they start to pull back. So if you're serious about this, please make sure that you're on you're both at even par with how you're making this relationship progress and how you're nurturing your your love together. It's also important if you're not going to be able to see each other for a couple of weeks, sometimes maybe even a month, that you have date nights via FaceTime or phone or however you want to do it. It's important to see each other, not just talk or text. You need to be able to see each other. You can have a date night, even watching a movie together, watching the same movie, have a glass of wine and talk. It's really quite exciting when you know, okay, Tuesday night, I'm having a FaceTime date with my person and they're excited about it and it happens. There's no glitches. Everything goes really nice all the time. And you can maintain it that way so that when you do get together, you've actually nurtured everything and it keeps flowing. So when you see each other, it's just as good as when you're talking to them via Zoom or FaceTime or all those things that you have at your fingertips now. This is a really wonderful thing in today's world of, of uh, long distance romance because you can make it happen, but you both have to be putting in the energy and the time it's not one person's job. It needs to stay balanced. So I've talked about the good things and how to keep it going, but you also have to be very aware of some of the, the you know, there's pros and cons to everything. And some of the, the cons can be the expense of travel. Maybe you've got a really uh, high profile career or job that you have to be around for and you can't just pick up and travel to go see your partner. These things can be a bit of a downfall, but you can find a way to make it work if you talk about it. If you just sort of shut the door on it and expect them to understand, that's not going to work. You really truly have to communicate to them that this is, this is how it's going to be for a while. Um, are you okay with this? What can we do to make things better? Just have lots of conversations about things that are a little bit of a, a, a problem because it, usually you can get through these type of situations with long distance if you always communicate. So one more con could, could be if someone starts ghosting the other person or they don't reply to texts for a long time, they're not phoning as often as they were, all these little things can cause a lot of, a lot of problems. So outweigh all the pros and cons. And if you've got a lot of really great things happening between the two of you, I think you should give it a shot why not? The important thing is to know when to stay and know when to walk away. What's working, what isn't working and go from there because I think you could have a really great relationship if you follow all the pros and cons and everything and pay close attention to them. Thank you so much for listening to Dear Cyber Sue. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Leave any comments or show topic ideas you have in the comment section below. Thanks everyone. We'll see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.